Yes, now. Nice. Okay, hi. <laughs> so now that you know my name, I will also tell you my age. I'm 23, and a few weeks ago, I wanted to buy a Kölsch, and they wanted to see my ID. Not so cool, <laughs> which is a bit annoying sometimes, but I think, okay, maybe in a few years I will be quite happy. But is it actually possible that I can look young forever? That is a question I want to answer with you tonight, if it's possible or not. So for that, I need to talk about the skin, which is a really great organ. And as everybody in that field, I need to start my talk by saying that it is the greatest and most curious one. And it is doing plenty of things, such as, for example, making me flush when I come on a scene like today, because I might be a bit nervous. But let's be honest. The skin is the organ that everybody is the most annoyed of. I mean, I don't know so many people, at least, healthy people that complain about their spleen or their adrenal glands in their daily life. It is the organ that is permanently exposed and that everybody can see. We get pimples, our skin is maybe too dry or too shiny, and at some point, we develop wrinkles. We are therefore our whole life trying to get back to the start and have a baby-like skin again. So I thought, so I can look young forever as well and get really rich and successful if I share my secret, that I could create an anti-aging cream that really is preventing aging. And for that, I wanted to get in contact with some celebrities that seem to know a lot about this process because they just <laughs> never seem to get old at all. But yeah, that didn't work so much. So I decided to turn to science instead. And it turns out that skin aging is a really complex machinery. So I'm really sorry to disappoint you. I will not deliver you the secrets of skin aging tonight, and nor will I give you any sample of my magic cream yet. But instead, nevertheless, I can add a small pyramid stone to this complex machinery, because I make some research about a really important cell in this process, which is the fibroblast. The fibroblast is a so-called tissue connective cell, which is doing plenty of great things. It can change its shape if it wants to, but it has also the ability to move and migrate and have its little party if it wants. We can compare it to the brick layer of our skin. It is producing the extracellular matrix, which contains collagen, elastin fibers, and a lot of other things. And once the work is done, it's mostly relaxing and lingering around, not doing so much. But it is always ready. When we have an injury, they will get activated and put on their superhero outfits, migrate to this place and produce a lot of collagen in order to fill the wounds and help to contract it so it will be closed. This is, by the way, the shiny aspects of these cells that you can see on your scars on your knees, for example. And you can imagine now that with the time, if the functions of the fibroblast decrease, that this extracellular matrix will not be produced adequately anymore. So you can see that the skin layer gets looser, it gets more holes, it is getting thinner, and this partly explains the wrinkles that we get. So you can also compare this to a card, um, card castle that breaks down. So now, to analyze the behavior of these cells, I could watch them throughout their whole lifespan. But because I don't want to get my doctor's degree when I'm 100, I need to apply other methods. And what we use here is a very important aspect in skin aging, and you all know it. It's mitochondria. So I now invite you to say it once with me. You know the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Very nice. <laughs> I actually never thought I would need to know anything else about this after school, but here I am. So I don't know how many mitochondria nerds we have tonight. I know we have, but did you know that the mitochondria has its own DNA? So I think we are all familiar with the nuclear, so the normal DNA, which looks like that. We know it from our biology books. But the mitochondria has its own, which is circular and is replicating 
independently of the normal one. So the mitochondria is doing a lot of things, and maybe you know the most important one, it is providing energy, of course, also for our dear fellows, the fibroblasts. But with the time, and what we can observe in skin aging, is that this mitochondrial DNA accumulates mutations, like the normal DNA also do. And this can also be influenced by some external factors, such as our lifestyle, like drinking alcohol, smoking, bad nutrition, and very importantly here, the sun. So we can compare what happens then to burnout in human beings. People get overloaded with work. They have a lot of stress, which leads them to not be able to do their work and so good anymore or to do it at all. And this is also something we can see with our fibroblasts. So when we accumulate these mutations, the energy providement will be impaired. And this will lead the fibroblasts to have something, to develop something that we call oxidative stress. So what do we do in the lab? I work with the transgenic mouse model, which contains some mitochondrial DNA mutations in the well, mitochondrial DNA, but we only activate them when we press on the start button. In this case, we feed the mouse with a special diet when they are approximately one year old. And what do we see then? Well, not so much. As you remember, I have really lazy cells, and if they don't do much, they don't need so much energy. Why would they need that? So we need to give them a task, a mission, so we can increase this mitochondria turnover, so we make it roll. And in this case, we induce a fibrosis. That is when the dermal fibroblasts produce a lot of collagen, more than we need. This is pathological. And it is accompanied by a local inflammation. And then what we can see, in a normal mouse, they will develop the fibrosis, which is like when the skin really gets thicker, it is rough, and it is accompanied by this inflammation. And in mutated mice, well, it seems that here the reaction is much milder. So what is happening here? Can it be that the fibroblasts develop some protection mechanisms to face this pathology? This is the question that I'm trying to answer. So it could be that the dermal fibroblasts just freeze. They decided to pause their lives so they don't have to answer to this pathology. But it could also be that they discard these mitochondrial mutations throughout undergoing autophagy. So maybe you've already heard of that in the context of the popular diet, which is the interval fasting, which is also correlated to an expanded lifespan. Or it could be that they just don't want to put on a superhero outfit anymore and refuse to work at all. And I want to end my talk by insisting that skin aging is not only the cosmetic aspect. It is much more. It has all this pathological aspect because our skin is our biggest barrier. Oh, I regret I have other many things, interesting things to tell. <laughs> I will be finished soon. So it is protecting us from the outside world against pathogens. It is helping us maintaining our water to regulate our heat or to heal wounds. And it would be really great to have a cream that is really preventing skin aging. Can we maybe block the mitochondria? Well, it has been shown that this eventually kills people, so rather be careful with that. So I really do rec recommend you instead, for the beginning, to protect you against the sun and use sunscreen instead. Thank you. She knows how you should treat your skin. Lena Reiter!